Hi, I'm Jeremy Hamm. I'm with Dr. Snelling, our geologist here at the Creation Museum, and we're in the Answers in Genesis offices right now. Answers in Genesis is an organization that created the Creation Museum, and Dr. Snelling, you've contributed to some of um, the content here in the Creation Museum as well, haven't you? Yes, over the years, because I've known your dad for over 40 years, Jeremy, and we've worked together mm -hmm. over the years, and uh, a lot of the information that I've accumulated over the years was was useful right. in, in development of the museum and the exhibits. Right. I wasn't always involved in every aspect, but there's a you know development of a literature with evidences and information that was then taken by artists to build the exhibits. And you are a scientist, so um, what is what is your degree? My degree, I have a a Bachelor of Science degree in Geology and a PhD, Doctor of Philosophy in Geology, both from Australian universities in Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I speak like an Aussie. So as people, when they come visit our Creation Museum visitor website, one of the key questions that they kind of want to know is, what are some of the best evidences from science that confirm a young Earth? Well, I can only talk primarily from my science of geology. Sure. And uh, But the thing that I, I, I think most people get very quickly is, when you show them evidence, the rock layers and the fossils in the rock layers formed rapidly and there wasn't millions of years between the rock layers. So that the sum total of time needed to accumulate all the rock layers, say, for example, mm -hmm. in the Grand Canyon, uh, wasn't millions of years right. and are better explained by the biblical, biblical flood. Hmm. And we're going to specifically focus on fossils because we're going to get to it here in a little bit. But there's this exciting adventure that you can go on called the fossil hunt. But before we get there... I'm interested. What are fossils to begin with? Well, fossils are the buried, entombed, preserved uh, remains of animals, plants that existed in the past. Mm -hmm. um, they're buried, you know, just like you go to a grave. You could go to a, a graveyard, a cemetery, right. and you you dig up the bones of the people in the grave. Well, this is where animals and plants have been covered by mud and sand, which is compressed and hardened, and it's converted them into what we call a fossil. And so you can see the, the details of the shell or the skeleton and, and what we're discovering exciting, which is, again, another evidence for a young Earth, is that, for example, dinosaur fossils mm -hmm. that are supposed to be over 65 million years old, they've actually recently discovered preserved blood vessels and blood cells and uh, soft tissue, which we know from experimental evidence doesn't survive millions of years. Right. So this is powerful evidence also from fossils themselves that the earth and the rock layers are young. That's amazing. I tell you what, um, fossils. So in order to create one, um, could I just find some roadkill and bury it with lots of dirt and there you have it, I have a fossil? Well, it's, it's almost like that. In fact, you know, recently there was a, a study published where they actually did something like that. They took, took animals and covered them very quickly and, and baked them at temperatures and mm -hmm. pressures. I mean, it's, it's not something very simple, but they, they turned things into fossil, what were fossils, unrecognizable for, from comparable fossils. It, it actually filled people when they were given them to identify. You know, if you leave, take roadkill and leave it out there for long enough, well, it dis disintegrates. Everybody knows that. So when you get a fossil of a fish eating another fish, as we have in the Creation Museum, mm -hmm. and that's not uh, un unique to our museum. We find, we find fossils like that uh, from the same location in the in Western United States that are present in a lot of museums. You know that a fish got buried and fossilized before he t had time to finish swallowing his breakfast. So that was virtually instantaneous. Right. And th th we can multiply the numbers of examples of fossils like that. So I was, my next question was going to be, what can you learn from fossils? You went into that a little bit. It can happen very instantaneously. Yeah, you, well, first of all, you, have, you think about the fossilization process. It's very rapid. So they met their demise very rapidly. In fact, the fossils are dead things. We've got to remember that. Mm -hmm. And we weren't there when they died, so we don't know where th that they died where we find them, and we don't even know where that they lived there where we find them. All right. we know is that they're buried there because we find them buried right. there. But just, just uh, you know, uh, we we can we can dig up a uh, human remains. We don't know the colour of the eyes, mm -hmm. but we can learn a lot about 
about the size of the animals. We can, uh, well, sometimes we find their fossil poo, you know, mm. and we can work out what they ate. Mm -hmm. um, we can look at their teeth, but then, you know, animals that have sharp teeth today it can eat vegetation uh, just like animals with sharp teeth mm -hmm. eat meat. So it's not always possible, but we can learn a lot of things. We find fossil f footprints, mm -hmm. so we can learn how they, you know, how tall they were because of the width of their gait. Oh, wow. extent like that and you know whether they're running at the time from the way their footprints mm -hmm. indent the so there's lots of things we can learn about how the animals lived in the past what they might have looked like what they might have ate but we've got to remember jeremy we weren't there in the past right. and our scientists well it's like a forensic scientist who wasn't at the scene of a crime He's trying to figure out who'd done it. So he's, you know, looking at the angle of the bullet where it came in and he's trying to piece together. Now, he might take that evidence in his mind, the evidence that he's convinced, you know, Dr. Dr. So-and-so did the crime. And then in a court of law, they bring in a witness who says, no, it wasn't him, it was her. Right. And so, you know, an eyewitness testimony outranks a forensic scientist. Well, it's the same I have to say this, you know, the fossil experts think that they know everything, but they weren't there. God was. And he tells us in his word how most of the fossils formed during the flood. Right. So um, we have to know the limits of our investigation, investigations and what we can learn from fossils. So when you use God's word as your foundation, God was there. So he knows exactly what happened. So you're going to come to the right conclusion. Yeah. And in fact, you know, it, it's like this. Everyone has a pair of glasses that they look through to examine the world right. around us. And a scientist who has glasses that believes in millions of years, he's going to try and look for evidence of millions of years. Whereas as a biblical creationist, I believe what God's word mm -hmm. says. So with my biblical glasses, I look at the fossils and I say, yeah, I expected them to be formed rapidly because God's word says they formed rapidly right. during the flood. I expect that they're young because the flood was only thousands of years right. ago and, and issues like that. And I see the evidence in the fossils and the rock layers mm -hmm. for the flood and a young earth. And my colleagues who are secularists who don't believe in God's word, they're right. going to disagree with me. But it's not because they're different rocks and fossils. No, we're looking at the same rocks and fossils. We're wearing a different set of glasses. And I think people need to remember that because otherwise they can get intimidated right by the pronouncements of scientists. We need to always examine everything in the light of God's word as Christians. Well, it makes sense. And you can learn more about fossils when you come to the Creation Museum and go through the walkthrough. Mm. But what we're here today is to learn more about the fossil hunt, this upcoming fossil yeah, hunt. Yeah, well, Jeremy, it's an opportunity for people to find their own fossils and take them home as exhibits. We encourage people to take home the fossils they find and to to use them as ways of creating, com opening up conversations with people and witnessing to what they learnt during the fossil hunt. Now, the exciting thing is we go to a state park. It's about 75 minutes from the museum. It's mm -hmm. close to us here. It's northwest in, over in Ohio. And uh, it's a, a recreational state park because there's a, a lake there that's been produced mm -hmm. by putting a, a wall across there to impound the water. Uh, Caesar Creek. Uh, state Park, and it's run by the Army Corps of Engineers. And what they did is, because it's an earthen wall to the dam, they built a side channel so that if the water starts to rise, it doesn't overflow the wall of the dam and cause it to erode. The water flows around it. So they had to cut through the rock. And most of the time, therefore, the rock layers are exposed and they freely allow people to go in there and collect pieces of rock that have fallen off the walls to look for fossils. That's really cool. And that means people are free. As long as you can fit it in the size of your hand, you can pick it up, put it in your pocket. We, we provide bags, actually. Mm -hmm. Put it in the bag, and you can take it home with you. And you can, you know, it's a great way for kids to, you know, for show and tell at school. Right. They can talk about it, and they can they can learn. I, I, I give them an opening lecture, a presentation, a closing presentation where everyone looks at one another's fossils to make sure they can identify their fossils. So we want to build right. the, the information into the experience so that they can then go and use that information. It's not just knowledge for the sake of knowledge. It's knowledge so that they can use it. That's really cool. Now, the date is September 22nd. That's a Saturday. So start planning now. 
the registration ends on September 13th, so you have a couple of weeks to think about it, but we're going to pin the link in the comments so you can learn more about how to register and all that. But I'm really curious, what are some of the most interesting fossils you found on this trip? Well, the, uh, the one that everyone goes for is trilobites. And uh, this location is well known for its trilobites, sometimes the little small ones. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the interesting thing, they're often coiled because you think about it and, and an animal uh, like a roly poly, <laughs> which is what they were like, if it senses danger, it's got a soft underbelly, it's going to roll up, uh, to, so it protects itself. And so a lot of them are found like that. They're very hard to find and it's always exciting when someone finds it. Mm -hmm. Um, another one that people like to find, but usually they're too large to, to, to take home uh, what we call uh, nautiloids or straight shell nautiloids. Everyone's familiar with the coiled nautilus today. Well, many of the fossils had straight shells. That's mm -hmm. a cigar shaped shell with, that had a head on it like a squid. Uh, so they're ones that are people wow. are rare that people enjoy finding. But, you know, there's horn corals, there's uh, all sorts of clams and lamp shells, bryozoans, which are lace corals. So lots of variety. They're all shallow water marine creatures that today you find living on the, near the seashore. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing, Jeremy, that I point out to people, where do we find them? Buried up on the continent where they don't live <laughs> today. So that means the water from the ocean had to rise up over right. the North American continent, carry these creatures up and bury them. See, it's, that's why it's so e easy to teach people because they can see the rock life, they can mm -hmm. see the fossils, and it suddenly dawns. You mean... The ocean had to rise up here to bring the fossils up, the, the creatures up here yep. to bury them. And so these are the, the important take-home lessons that people get on these fossil sure. hunts. I could definitely see that. So um, what have past attendees enjoyed the most? Uh, what have they said? Well, um, they've enjoyed the opportunity to, to collect the fossils mm -hmm. under the watchful eye of someone like me who can identify the fossils right. for them. Um, they can have fun together. It's often a great family time, you know, fathers with sons and daughters or, mm -hmm. you know, mums and dads with their daughters or even parents, uh, grandparents with their grandchildren. It's a great bonding time. It's a o open air, fresh air, um, usually because we have it uh, when it's still warm. It's, uh, it's an enjoyable time mm -hmm. and uh, exercise, fresh air, learning together. And uh, people just love the opportunity to um, collect the fossils right. under the gazing eye of someone with expertise that can help them to understand the fossils, to know, uh, to identify the fossils, so that when they talk about them, you know, kids at show and tell, for example, they can sound real knowledgeable because right. they've learnt on the on the fossil hunt. And for homeschoolers, it's a good field absolutely. trip. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, who should attend this event? Well, normally we encourage anyone from 12 upwards. Mm -hmm. um, we have had younger children, but they have to be under parent supervision. Right. But normally we encourage parents to bring children, grandparents to bring, mm -hmm. bring their children. Right. Usually from age 12 and upwards is, is best uh, because they're going to have the physical stamina and they're also at the stage of their education where they're going to absorb the information. Right. Well, I have some really good news for every single one of you out there. There are still some spots left. The sad news is there's only limited space. So mm -hmm. you need to sign up by September 13th, and it's happening on September 22nd, a Saturday. So be sure to sign up soon. And do you have any other thoughts? Yeah, well, we provide lunch and drinks as well. We meet at a classroom at, mm -hmm. the, at the visitor center. And we finish at the classroom. Mm -hmm. And uh, so you, you, it's well look, you're well looked after. You just have to turn up uh, with your registration right. covers covers the lunch and the you know water and drinks, and uh, we have a great time. So uh, you know I thoroughly recommend it. We've had people who've come back a second time with other children, other grandchildren, mm -hmm. and so it's a great family event. And uh, but being on a Saturday, Jeremy, you know if if you tr we've had people who travel a great distance to mm -hmm. get here, so they make it a, 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 a you know a weekend event. They you know, might come, get off work on Thursday, come on Friday, visit the Ark or the museum, then have the fossil hunt and they can still come back on, on the Sunday afternoon. So they can tie it in. I've had people come as, from you know, Minnesota, mm -hmm. from uh, further afield even, 
and they've made it a you know part of their vacation plans or a weekend a getaway. Idea. And so it, it's a great time for all the family to learn together. I mean, this is very important, right. Jer Jeremy, because um, the, the parents are learning with the children as mm -hmm. well. And so what they learn, they can revise right. with the kids when they go home. So, um, you know, families, definitely family friendly <clears throat> and put it in your calendar and come. Wow. So there's a lot of nearby <coughs> attractions around here, too, whether it be the Newport Aquarium or things of that nature. So if you want to come to the Ark Encounter, the Creation Museum, you can even fit in some other places while you're at it. But thank you so much for joining me and taking your time. I really appreciate it. It's a pleasure, Jeremy. I've learned things just talking to you now, so oh, I really good. appreciate it's it. good. We look forward to seeing you all September 22 at the Fossil Hunt.